Okay, so what I wanted to try to do this afternoon was just re-explore together and explore very much explore together uh, the best practices for hosting Zoom for hybrid events. So I think we're all pretty familiar with um, hosting <laughs> Zoom and everybody is online as we are here. If we're hosting a hybrid event where we've got people in the room as well as people online, um, there are some interesting challenges about how you make that meeting work well for both parties, for both the, the rumours and the Zoomers, as they're sometimes called. Um, and I thought, um, you know, I don't have any particular words of wisdom um, because I'm not sure anybody has got this completely right yet. Um, but I thought it was worth us exploring at least the, the, the before, the during and the after um, of, of, of all of that to, to just share some experience or to, to step to share some thoughts about how that might work. So let's talk about when we join a meeting at the beginning. The, if it's all online, um, the classic is we all hang around in the waiting room and somebody lets us in um, and then there may or may not be a bit of small talk um, and then we're on our way. So, but if you were joining, if you were in a physical meeting um, and the meeting started at half past seven, then lots of people would start arriving at quarter past seven, 20 past seven. They'd come in through the door. They would see some people who they recognize or maybe not. Someone would say hello. And immediately there'd be a sense of occasion. There'd be a sense of people starting to meet, starting to mingle. Um, maybe a sense of anticipation or expectation about what the event itself was going to be. So what I wanted to explore was, well, how do we replicate that on Zoom? Because I think we have to, otherwise it's a very different experience. Um, some of you have heard me use the, uh, the example of Radio 3 broadcasting the proms. And at the beginning of the television broadcast, um, Katie Derham or whoever it is, is standing uh, in a box at the Albert Hall and you can see the Albert Hall behind her. And she says in soft, dulcet tones, welcome to the Royal Albert Hall in this evening's concert. Da, 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 da. And oh, I can see the leader is just coming in and here is the conductor. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, let's join the audience at the Royal Albert Hall for this evening's concert. And so she has been very carefully hosting, if you like, the online audience. How do you think we might do that in a Zoom world, in a, in a hybrid world? If we've got this event, which is hybrid, where we've got people in the room and people joining on Zoom, how do we make the Zoom people feel welcomed? Um, I'm going to throw that out there because, um, as I say, there are no right answers and I'm really keen to, to get your thoughts of what has worked, maybe what hasn't worked, so that we can all learn from it. Any thoughts? I think it depends on the, oh, sorry. Uh, I think it depends on the size of you yeah, know, go the group. Because if it's a small group, you can address everyone individually and acknowledge them, which automatically makes people feel better. But if it's a bigger group, I guess you have to work on a general warm welcome to everyone. I was going to say, yeah, I think it depends on, depends on whether it's an interactive hybrid type event or if it's a, like you're talking about the Radio 3, the presentation one. So if it's, if it's more of a presentation, then you probably do need someone hosting. If it's a semi inter or some sort of interaction, we quite often just chat amongst ourselves online. And I guess if you really wanted to set it up, you could make sure there's two or three people there that you prompted beforehand to say, you know, have a chat amongst yourselves or throw out one or two, you know, what's the weather like, that sort of stuff, just to, you know, that sense of occasion and chatting amongst yourselves before it starts. That works well, clearly, if people in the room know each other. It works less well if we've got people who don't know each other. Yeah. Uh, and I guess that's again the same. We're walking into a room. Um, yeah. Phoebe. So um, if it's a hybrid event, you just make sure that you've got somebody to concentrate and focus only on the people that are attending on Zoom so that somebody's looking after these people's needs and, and welcoming them and making sure that they're 
okay and that there's no tech problems for them. Yeah. I think also I, I go on a lot of groups. I just throw myself in the deep end. I'm not frightened to talk to total strangers, but I've noticed that I was in one the other day um, about anti-Semitism in art, and ma mainly Americans, and the guy said, anyone who's new to this group, you know, introduce yourself, which was quite good because sometimes it doesn't really bother me if people can be cliquey, but I think it is nice to say to someone who's not in a regular, more regular group, you know, Nice to meet you. you need to say a few couple of lines about yourself. I think Americans are much better than that than Brits. Interest, interestingly, um, that's true in a physical space. If you see Americans at an exhibition, um, that is their norm to just walk up onto the stand and say hi. Tell me about yourself. And Brits typically at an exhibition do everything they can to avoid getting eye contact, just in case someone tries to steal something to them. Yet, why were you there in the first place? And I think what clearly comes through from that is the importance of having a host, having an online host, someone who feels that responsibility to, well, to, to meet and greet the online audience. Um, because we typically either do it in a physical space, we do it, either consciously or unconsciously. Actually, sometimes we forget to do it as well. That's equally true in a physical space. Um, we aren't necessarily very good at having someone at the door meeting and greeting. Um, but, but I think that the, the two are equal. Um, so there's definitely another role there. There is a, definitely a meter and a greeter on Zoom, which certainly in a large or complicated meeting, and I think a hybrid is likely to be that, probably needs to be separate from someone who is looking after the tech. There'll be enough to do to make sure that the tech is working. Um, and of course, the skills may be different. Um, the skills for making sure the tech is working for the people in the room and the presenter and managing the waiting room and muting people and all those sorts of more technical skills are a bit different from the meet and greet. Um, so that's certainly something to think about. Okay. While we're on that part of it, any thoughts about how we can use some of the Zoom tech um, to help us? What do you think about having a, effectively a rolling slideshow when people arrive, um, which tells them what's happening, um, what to expect, what else is happening in two weeks time, um, whatever it is. Um, has anybody ever tried that or seen that done? It's definitely worth thinking about. If you look a lot at a lot of professional um, webcasters or podcasters, um, you will very often see them running effectively a countdown. So recognizing that people will join a few minutes beforehand, they'll have a countdown running from five minutes to, uh, to zero. Um, you'll have seen that when Fiona hosts, she often has music playing in the background. Uh, just so that, again, there's something there rather than these nine boxes, which are just statically there, and that slight feeling of embarrassment of, well, do I speak? Don't I speak? Because the reality is, even with eight or nine people, you can't have an easy chat on Zoom. It is one of the downsides of the technology. Um, in a physical space, we might just edge off into a corner and have a private conversation um, and then do all the reading of body language and move over to that person over there and, and make the excuse while you grab the cup of coffee. And those sorts of things are quite difficult in Zoom, although we will talk in, in a moment about breakout rooms. But certainly I think it is well worth thinking about having a short PowerPoint, even if it's a, sli a sl single slide um, or a rolling presentation every 30 seconds. You know, welcome to this event, this will be our guest speaker. Um, uh, in two weeks' time, we look forward to welcoming X, Y, and Z. Um, if you'd like any more information about the organization, contact whomever. Again, I think we can use something with the technology that just makes the whole event feel more engaging um, for people on Zoom in particular, because you can't just look around the room. Um, 
Whereas in a physical event, you can look around the room, you can see who's there, you can see that, oh, they're not serving coffee yet, but they will, they obviously will do um, after the meeting. Um, oh, there's John over there, I wonder whether he will mind if I sit with him next week, um, um, this week, or whatever. These are the sorts of things that we just need to find ways of replicating in the Zoom world so that people feel that they've had as much of an engagement, not just that they've been a foyer into the event. I mentioned breakout rooms there. Um, has anybody had any experience of using breakout rooms in that sort of way as the sort of the meet and greet uh, element yeah. of of it. A little. I think people still need to learn how to use those as well, because if you allocate a few people to a breakout room, you can sometimes get one dominant person that just talks to one particular person. And then, you know, the only way you can get a word in edgeways is, in, is to interrupt. And then it seems like you're being rude, but you know, if you don't interrupt, you won't get a word in edgeways. <laughs> yes. Um, sometimes, sometimes true in the physical space as well, of course. Uh, but at least in the physical space, you can walk away. Yeah, that's true. Yes. <laughs> You've always got screensaver. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Excuse me while I switch my video off briefly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, any other experiences of using breakout rooms in that way? So that not, if you like, as part of the meeting itself, but as a, as a more social space. We've done it after a service rather than beforehand. So we'll okay. do the service and then, you know, maybe it's service between two or three communities. And if, you know, Edinburgh and Manchester and Leicester want to split off afterwards, offered it that as an option. And, and that tends to, the way we've done it, it tends to be a sort of a general feel. Sometimes we'll do it, sometimes we won't. It just depends on how many people are up for it. So there's no great planning in that sense, which I know is against what you're saying. But I think, again, it depends on the, on how you're running it and if it is more of a an interactive thing you can get away with that if people aren't expecting it to be a formal thing yes i don't think these breakouts have to be formal but the mere fact that you've done it suggests that someone has thought about it um mm. and therefore yeah the the zoom host has or somebody has taken the initiative at the right time to say yeah and now folks let's break into some smaller groups so we can carry on chatting so yeah. it doesn't have to be any more formal than that as long as it's on the running order, as it were, as long as somebody knows that they're going to have the responsibility for taking that decision and making it happen, then then why not? Damn yeah. it. And I'm just say, first of all, I'm sorry I'm so late. I haven't noticed the time. I think a bit of a day. Um, uh, but um, I mean, I I've never I haven't done much with breakout rooms, but I know in theory how to just um, do it on the the fly kind of thing. What I don't know is how to assign uh, sort of people within into groups beforehand and whether that's possible. And I know that people who have tried it have had problems with it. Um, I'll be honest, it's not an area that I've done an enormous amount with. I've done a little bit. Um, you can't pre-allocate, of course, if you don't know who's coming to the meeting. Um, so I can see how it works where there's a very defined group of people who've registered. Um, if you've got more of a drop-in event um, or a service where people may or may not come or whatever, um, then it requires a little bit more thinking about, or you'd literally just let it random. You, you, you let it randomize. So you can um, randomize it, but you can't, um, is there a way to sort of say to people, you can choose which one you want to go to? Um, no, there isn't. Right. Okay. Um, so, oh, so I beg your pardon. Yes, there is. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to waste time screen, screen my, sharing my screen. Um, but if you, um, but if you create a breakout room, you get three options. You, you can tell it how many breakout rooms you want. So create three, and then you can say assign automatically, assign manually, or let participants choose. Oh, right. Okay. Thank you. Um, but if you let the participants choose, I'm not sure, I, 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 um, I'd need to do a bit more work on this. Um, you, letting them choose one, two or three doesn't really work, so unless they're able to choose how to go, well, why don't we give it a quick go? So I'm going next. I was going to say, that's what we do. We'll say one is Leicester, two is Manchester, three is Edinburgh, 
and then oh, right. yes. I can't exactly remember how you do it, but when it says, you know, when it comes up, you just click on whatever number it is. And I know it can't be difficult because we all seem to manage to do it. <laughs> yes, fine. OK, well, why don't we quickly have a go at it and then we'll all learn. So I'm going to force it to create three breakout rooms. I'm saying let participants choose the room. Um, and then we'll all, I mean, I've done no pre-assignment of this. There are nine of us in the meeting. So we'll see what it does. I'll click create now. We'll just give it 15, 30 seconds so we've seen what it does, and then we can come back together again. So I'm going to create, click create now, and we'll see what it says. So one of the constraints of breakout rooms is that the host can no longer speak into breakout rooms until you come back. Um, I could do a broadcast to everybody, but I can't override the talking to everybody. So all I could do is send a message saying they're closing, and they'll, they'll all be back with us in the next 15 seconds. Can you close the breakout rooms yourself? You, um, when you say close the breakout rooms, by default, it says that uh, it starts a countdown of 60 seconds to all give right. people notice that it's on its way. Right. So within the next 10 seconds or so, everybody should be back. OK, so everybody is back. Um, so, yes, yeah, so the, the, the breakout rooms came up numbered one, two, and three. Um, I suspect if I'd have done more work beforehand, I could have pre-labeled them. So they were labeled um, um, uh, uh, with some names, if that was helpful. Um, someone pointed out, well, as soon as you are in a breakout room, I, as the host, can no longer talk to you. Um, I can only talk to whoever is left in the main body of the room. Um, but so that is another way of doing it. Um, and certainly, um, Nick, you mentioned that you've done it at the end of services. Um, again, it works for people who, who, who stream their services, not, of course, for those who don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. I certainly know that some shuls are doing it for the Kiddush, um, that they are keeping everybody together. And then for, for a virtual Kiddush, they're literally doing a random assignment into groups of five or six, no more. So, which attempts to replicate the idea of people standing around in small groups. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yes, there's always the risk that someone will dominate it or doesn't wish to chat. Um, but it is just a different way of doing something and a way of making it feel more uh, engaged. OK, so we've talked a little bit about how we might make the event feel more at home at the beginning. Um, last thing I think to mention there is then the timing of the event. Now, this is always difficult because of Jewish mean time. Um, but Zoom has introduced a really interesting discipline that if the meeting starts at five o'clock, it's now very much the norm that people arrive sometime between 4.59 and 5.01. Um, it never used to happen in the physical space. Um, and if we want to encourage people to have a little bit of get to know you per time beforehand, then we are going to have to get back to advertising it as um, you know, join us from 10 to 5 and the meeting will start at 5 and the presentation will start at 5 o'clock. So again, we need to do a little bit more planning and agenda setting so that people have a very clear idea of what the real timetable in the agenda is going to be. Um, clearly, it's slightly embarrassing if, like this evening, there's a tech problem. I then start the meeting 20 minutes late. Um, but, but passing that, uh, pa passing that by for the moment, that's just one of those things. But if we want people to come in and feel at home and chat to people, then we need to tell them that that's part of the agenda. They expect it by default in a physical room, and by default, they don't expect it in a Zoom space. So if it's what we're going to do, we just need to tell them. So we talked a bit about what might happen at the beginning of a hybrid. We started talking about what might happen at the end. We talked a little bit about breaking out, whether it's into individual congregations or pre-assigned groups or for kiddush or whatever. What if it's a classic speaker and slides and Q&A type session? Um, again, in the room, hopefully you'd be able to adjourn for tea and biscuits. Is there a way of replicating that in the Zoom space? Should we try and replicate it or in the Zoom space? Or is it just the fact of technology that the meeting ends, the event ends at one point for the virtual community, 
and may extend in the physical space. What are your thoughts? If it's a very long meeting, then it's nice to say, um, let's stop for a break. And, you know, you've got 10, 15 minutes to go make yourself a cuppa. Yes, definitely. Or pour a large yeah. vodka and tonic if it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. It just looks like water, honestly, I assure you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's certainly worth thinking about. People's attention span is different. Um, then you get into all of the, um, the cultural stuff of, is it acceptable to turn your camera off uh, and your microphone off? Microphone, yes, in, in a long meeting. Um, in some meetings, it's very acceptable to turn your camera off. And I think we have to make that very clear as well, that we're using Zoom as a platform, but if you don't wish to be seen, that's absolutely fine. Um, we have to, I think, make people feel comfortable about that. Janet? Um, just um, interesting experiences we've had in our couple of experiments with hybrid events. Um, that first of all, I've now got my computer set up so that if somebody switches their um, camera off, they can't be seen on screen at all. Whereas um, before you could see the box. Now, yes. if, if you're live streaming, I think that's a really good setting because what happens otherwise is that everybody who's watching, you know, well, we, we had it, so it was a remote speaker so everybody could see the live streaming um and see all the little boxes with the black boxes of people who were um who'd switch their cameras off um and and that didn't actually look very nice and um the other thing that we found um was you've got to be so careful not to not to try and chat between the uh the live streamer and the zoom person um because everybody can see the chat so you have to use whatsapp or or in our case because i hadn't thought of that i was sort of stomping across the room um so you either need to be physically close to them or be using whatsapp or text or something that is nothing to do with um the sort of the the zoom well the, the meeting itself yes uh, let me come back to that because i want to talk about that and how we have the, the, the offline chats as well right yeah. Um, so yes, Marilyn says you can you can speak to what to an individual person with chat. When you use chat, um, you can chat to either everyone or you can chat to a named person. Yes, um, but what I mean is that if you're chatting to an if you're uh, chatting it, it, to one person, but it's it's being then, sent to the live streamer yes. as the one person everybody can see it if absolutely. it's all being it's on the big screen. screen yeah yes it's on the big screen yes yeah. absolutely um, and i just hadn't thought about that at all it was lucky i hadn't said who's that complete idiot sitting in the corner or something you know? yeah absolutely yeah absolutely <laughs> yes yeah no that, that that's certainly true um marilyn your question about um where the setting is I will, I can't find the moment, there is a setting which basically says in um, gallery view, hide people whose camera is off. Um, and I will find it for you in a minute. Um, so at the on. minute, Marilyn's off. And if you go onto Marilyn in the top right hand corner with the three dots and click on it, I've got the option Thank that you. says hide non-video participants. Thank you. Yep. Well done. There it is. Yeah. Hide non-video participants. That's it. Thank you for that. Thank you, Nick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we sort of, there's an implication there from what Janet was saying. Let's go down that little rabbit hole of the different roles. Um, because we've already talked a little bit about, well, I would mentioned the idea of a Zoom host from, a, from the point of view of meeting and greeting people as being a separate role from whoever is technically running the Zoom meeting. If it is a hybrid event, then there is definitely a third role, which is whoever's screen is being shown on the big screen um, and controlling what is on the big screen um, and the, the audio that's being um, heard in the room is definitely a third and separate role. Uh, 
if nothing else, uh, because of the point that, um, that Janet has made, uh, that they can't have that they can't use chat because it'll appear on the big screen. Um, but it also means, for example, if somebody is screen sharing, um, then that person who is controlling the what's on the big screen um, can control how much of the screen is taken up by the screen share and how much of it is taken up by the thumbnail. Um, if you're in that situation, if you've got a screen share, um, I'm sure you will have seen in the standard view that you've got a slider bar and you can drag it left and right. Um, you can do this yourself, not, not necessarily on a big screen. As soon as somebody screen shares, you have the choice of how much of your real estate is taken up by the screen share and how much of it is taken up by um, the talking head. And certainly if something is going on a big screen in front of the physical audience, then that's important. Then that's an, an option of what's going on. Janet. Um, in all the events that hybrid events I've been involved with so far, there's always been just two role, well, two people. Um, so the Zoom host, which is, has usually been me, and then the live streamer is also the one whose uh, screen is being displayed on the large screen. So I think it's important that we distinguish between roles and number of individuals. Mm -hmm. um, because let me introduce the fourth, well, the, the fourth and even the fifth role. And for those, and when, and when we get back to doing some more face-to-face -face training, we'll spend much more time talking about this. Um, but the fourth role is the, uh, again, in a, uh, in a speaker and Q&A type event, is the person sitting at the front who is, if you like, the chair of the meeting, uh, the facilitator of the meeting or the chair of the meeting. Um, and then there is the presenter themselves, whoever is the, 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 um, the author or the cook or whoever it is that we've come to see or, or, or see, or the, uh, the singer or the band or whatever. So we've actually got five different roles that we need to cover. And depending on the nature of the event and the scale of the event, but also, frankly, the number of volunteers we've got, will depend on how many of those we can interact with. But it's worth mentioning, I think it's important when we plan hybrid events to at least understand we have the five roles and then make sure we understand how they're being covered. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, as organizers of these events, we'll just realize we've got it wrong and we'll, we'll fall over it and we'll hiccup and we'll think, oh my goodness, I can't possibly introduce the speaker and have uh, and deal with the Q and A and deal with the meeting room and welcome the people on Zoom um, and thank the speaker at the end and share the slides. It's just going to be a real struggle. Um, Panina, is that a hand up? Yeah, I, I I think it's really important if what you know from what you're saying to make sure you have at least one person where you can have a bit of you know good good prep or, or more than one teamwork. That's important, isn't it? Yes. It is. Um, I've tried doing th I've tried doing these things with not enough people, and well, it's stressful. Let's put it that way. It's stressful, and actually, it turns to embarrassment because the other thing is that nobody, those of us who are putting together and hosting these events are trying to do our best and we are trying to make it as professional as we possibly can. And most audiences are pretty forgiving. You were all extremely forgiving of the technical problem that I had at the beginning of, the, of this session. It doesn't change the fact that I feel embarrassed by the fact that it happened. And the same applies and the bigger the event, the more exposed that you will feel. And if it is a new venue, it will feel more exposed. And if it is a new group, it will feel more exposed. Um, and it almost doesn't matter how many times you practice. Well, there's, yeah, there's a reason why people do practice and rehearsal is because these things can go wrong. And if there's technology involved, it can go even more wrong. Um, so again, yeah, that's another one worth talking about. Janet? Um, I was just going to say on the sort of technology going wrong, um, uh, we, we had a sort of interesting situation where we were having problems with the sound at an event. And what we didn't realise was that all everyone who was sort of logged in remotely 
we could hear them perfectly clearly as we could the presenter the problem was in the room it wasn't mm. with everybody else so it was fine for the zoomers to ask questions because we could hear them um, but the rumors couldn't be heard by outside the room um, and once again we just hadn't realized that um, you exactly. know it's all these things that you you know it's inexperience the main thing is just to be kind and use a bit of humour, I think, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah it's, it's just that strange yeah. thing of when it's hybrid, it's very difficult to work out how it impacts on the two different groups. Yeah. And kind of the room you can see because you can see people's yeah. facial expressions and things like that. In the room, you can't necessarily see it. Yeah. Marlon, your hand's still up. I don't know if that's for a reason or just... Well, um, it was to ask if the people with the different roles, if they're not at the principal event in that room, does that make things more difficult? I think it does. I mean, I've done, I haven't done hybrid events with people in different rooms, but obviously things like Limud, um, you know, I've been, there have been like a technical host and then a, a sort of, you know, meet and greet host. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't necessarily even know where the technical host is while I'm doing the meeting and greeting. Um, but certainly having, you really, really have to have a WhatsApp group on the go if you're going to do something like that. Because anything can go wrong, as we can see, you know, we, uh, now at this point, we will be WhatsApping Mike and saying, we've lost you, you know, though he's probably fairly well aware of it. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, otherwise we'd be completely stranded. We're stranded now. We can't get in touch with Mike. We have to wait for him to come back in. That doesn't matter for us right now, but it would do if you were in the middle of a presentation. The last thing I wanted to mention in that space, just in the last few minutes we have, um, and it comes back to the use of breakout rooms, um, is if we have imp uh, remote presenters in particular who are going to be really important to the event. That may be the primary speaker, or it might be a shared um, event where uh, we've got people in the room and people remotely participating. Um, it might be a service where we've got somebody remotely who is either um, participating or doing a mitzvah or whatever, again, depending on the nature of the event. It's obviously very important to make sure that their connection and their setup in particular is working and working well. Um, most people's works pretty well most of the time. But one way that can work really well is use it, is before the event, using a breakout room as what you might call a green room. So a, um, a technical tryout space. So inviting your guest to join 15 minutes before the meeting. And as soon as they do, you and they go into a breakout room then you can have the conversation with them which says um, your sound isn't great are you on the right microphone or you know um, we're only seeing the top of your head like this do you think you could rearrange your camera um, and they are the small things that are well worth doing just to make the best of what we've got and a breakout room is a really good place for doing that you don't want to do it in the public eye of everybody who is joining the meeting, but you really do want to do it. Um, and so I leave that one with you as well. Um, well, to be honest, it's true whether it's a hybrid meeting or just a Zoom meeting if it's an important guest speaker, but it's particularly true if it's a hybrid event um, because to some extent the people in the room will feel a little bit less forgiving, I suspect. The people in the room will think there are 20 of us here and I can see and I can hear and why is that such a bad picture because they're seeing a full screen they're not seeing a little box and hopefully they forget that they're seeing a zoom meeting so so that was the last thing I wanted to just you know, chuck out there just before we finish any last thoughts or comments or questions before we do close on this whole question of how to make the best of Zoom in a hybrid world or experiences to share. Just thanks. That was all really helpful. Yeah, very, very yeah. useful indeed, Mike. Yeah. Lots of good tips yeah, yeah. and pointers. Thanks very good. much. It's been great. Thank you. Yeah. You're thanks. very, very welcome. Thanks for good. persevering. Well,
Enjoy, yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the rest enjoy of your holiday. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. I shall work hard at that. Uh, <laughs> um, hopefully, as the world starts to settle, we will get back to doing some, yeah, some real hybrid events um, for real. And I shall plan to be there with you. Uh, we will get back in place the, uh, the hands-on training using the equipment that uh, we have bought as part of the Jewish Scotland uh, Connected Project, uh, at least in Glasgow and in Edinburgh again, if there's a, a call for doing it. Um, we will certainly run some sessions on the sort of stuff we've been talking about this evening, about those five roles, um, to give people the opportunity of practicing it and trying it and saying, oh, if I combine this and that, would that work, just to embed it. And also, I think, just also to recognise that this stuff takes learning, it takes experience, we don't get it right first time, um, and the more we do it, the better we will be. And in two years' time, we'll forget how new it was, and in five years' time, there'll be some new technology that we will have to grapple with. So we'll leave it there. Thank you for your participation. Okay, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you very much. Take care. All right, thanks. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.